In terms of energy, we estimate savings of around $100,000 in energy costs over a six-month operational period. Our manure system provides two revenue streams, biogas, which supplies 80% of the farm's energy demand, and digestate, which reduces fertilizer needs by about 20% in the treated areas. Jesse sent a message saying that he won't be making videos anymore because you haven't subscribed to the Santa Fe channel. So subscribe now and he will continue recording on farms around the world. We are now in the biodigester area. We operate two biodigesters connected in series. Part of the biogas is captured in the first unit and the remainder in the second unit, allowing for sufficient retention time to maximize gas extraction. After the manure passes through the biodigesters, the digestate is stored in a holding pond for later fertilization use. This process is particularly valuable in our silage areas, where nutrient removal is intense. When we apply synthetic fertilizers, we rely on external inputs, but through organic fertilization or slurry irrigation, we maintain nutrients within the farm's nutrient cycle. This has allowed us to reduce fertilizer purchases by 20 to 30%. The digestate is rich in nitrogen, with concentrations slightly above 1%, which may seem low, but when applied at 10 to 20 millimeters per square meter, it becomes highly significant. Our manure system provides two revenue streams, biogas, which supplies 80% of the farm's energy demand, and digestate, which reduces fertilizer needs by about 20% in the treated areas. We have been researching biodigesters for a long time. There has been significant innovation in recent years. I began investigating this in 2018 when I returned to the farm, but the market was still not fully mature. In the meantime, we invested in solar power, which now supplies 40% of our energy demand. By the end of last year, we finally gathered the technical information and found a reliable company to support the project, and we decided to add biogas energy production. Now, Biogas covers 80% of our energy needs, leaving a 20% surplus, which we convert into credit on our energy bill. Looking back, I'm glad we waited. Many earlier adopters faced challenges. Today, the mixing systems, recirculation, retention times, and membrane covers are all well developed. And in practice, they have proven to be effective and reliable. The biodigesters have been in operation for approximately six months. And during this period, we have produced around 600,000 kilowatt hours through two biogas powered generators. These generators operate off grid, not connected to the utility grid, and adjust output based on demand. In our region, the average cost of electricity is about two cents per kilowatt hour. So we estimate that this system has already generated approximately $100,000 in energy savings within six months of operation. The biodigesters are slightly oversized with a retention time longer than necessary. This was intentional, as we are planning for future herd expansion and increased milk production. The current system is dimensioned to serve around 800 to 900 lactating cows. A key aspect for the optimal performance of a biodigester is maintaining a constant and stable inflow of material. Since it is an anaerobic biological process driven by bacteria, it is essential to avoid introducing chemical contaminants into the system such as milking parlor wash water, which must be redirected to prevent interference with bacterial activity. The manure enters the biodigester via a pipeline, which splits into a wide junction to distribute the flow. The ideal retention time is approximately 30 days, but currently we are operating at 50 days, which is why we describe the system as oversized. The biodigester itself measures 60 meters in length, 20 meters in width, and five meters in depth. It is equipped with two agitators and a recirculation pump. The recirculation pump is crucial to avoid sludge accumulation at the bottom, thereby reducing maintenance needs and enhancing gas production through continuous agitation. At the outlet end, the recirculation pump redirects inoculated material, rich in bacterial colony forming units, back to the inlet, facilitating faster and more efficient biogas generation from the incoming material. Currently, our biogas composition is excellent, averaging 65% methane and 10 parts per million of hydrogen sulfide, a very low level that prolongs the lifespan of the generators. In general, it's a simple and reliable system to operate. It is a low maintenance setup that operates autonomously. We check it periodically, but overall, it has integrated very well with our operation, especially since we have a high on-farm energy demand. 
We use cross ventilation, electric powered pumps, and we also have an on-site feed mill. Our current monthly electricity consumption is approximately 100,000 kilowatt hours. Given this demand, having our own energy source has provided a highly effective cost reduction strategy. As previously mentioned, the market cost of electricity is about 80 to 82 cents per kilowatt hour. With the biogas system in place, we estimate that our current energy cost is under 10 cents per kilowatt hour, already factoring in generator maintenance, investment payback, and solar panels upkeep. By reducing energy costs by a factor of eight to 10, we've addressed one of the most significant cost components of confined dairy production. This system fits our model extremely well and we intend to continue expanding our investment in self-sustaining energy generation. As I mentioned, this biodigester system is oversized and designed to accommodate up to 800 to 900 cows. Considering all biodigester related costs, we estimate the operating cost at approximately 1.5 to 1.6 cents per liter of milk. However, we treat this as a core dairy operation cost. To us, the biodigester is a tool that helps produce higher quality digestate, thus enabling better organic fertilization. We attribute the energy generation cost only to the biogas generators, which amounted to $500,000. So in budgeting, we separate the biodigester as part of the manure management system and the generators as part of the energy system. In total, including earthworks, labor, and geomembranes, the combined project cost was around $362,000. Another interesting observation, our biogas and energy production is directly related to milk production. It's early to make definitive conclusions, but in December through February, we noticed that during periods of heat stress, when milk production fell from 21,000 to 17,500 liters per day, biogas output also decreased significantly. We initially thought there was an issue with the biodigester, but ultimately we linked the drop to decreased manure output, stemming from lower dry matter intake and milk production due to heat stress. When cows experience heat stress, they reduce dry matter intake, which leads to lower manure production, lower milk yield, and consequently, less substrate for bacterial fermentation in the biodigester. This reduction in available organic material explains the decrease in biogas output. I track this in a spreadsheet, calculating gas production per animal unit, converting heifers, calves, and cows into a standardized animal unit metric. I'm trying to establish correlations between animal units, milk yield, and biogas production. As milk production climbs back to around 20,000 liters per day, biogas generation is also increasing. Here we have bio one, and adjacent to it, the transition chambers. There's a 50 centimeter elevation difference between bio one and bio two. So material flows by gravity. What we see here is the material after it has passed through bio one with the majority of the biogas already extracted, then moving into bio two. It looks deflated now because we've left the generators running longer to allow for maintenance. The retention time target is 30 days. How is this calculated? If the daily manure input is 70 cubic meters, the total biodigester volume must be 30 times that amount, about 2,100 cubic meters. Since we planned the project for future expansion, we opted to build two digesters, while Bio2 produces less gas, as 80% of gas is extracted in Bio1. It plays a key role in system continuity. As we increase herd size, the system will operate closer to peak efficiency. We are already preparing the site for two additional biodigesters, Bio3 and Bio4. These will be installed in parallel, not in series like the first two. Incoming material will be split between the two new digesters, either routed upward or downward depending on system demand. It may be a bit early to begin Bio3 and 4, but we needed soil for another earthworks project, so we've initiated site preparation. This space is designated for the third and fourth biodigesters, although we are also considering the option of installing a CSTR, continuously stirred tank reactor, a German standard system with higher gas efficiency, but also a much higher investment cost. For now, we believe the current system offers the best cost benefit ratio. This is our biogas power generation plant. We have two MWM generators, each with a capacity of 130 kilowatts. 
The optimal operating range is between 70 and 100 kilowatts to avoid excessive wear. Generator 2 powers all climate control systems, including cross ventilation, fans, lighting, and the scrapers. Generator 1 supplies power to the offices, milking parlor, milk cooling, processing, and the feed mill. The biogas travels from the biodigester through buried pipelines, entering a gas dryer to remove moisture, then a compressor, and finally the generators. The generators are currently offline for preventive maintenance, including oil changes, spark plugs, ignition coils, and any other necessary components. Generator 2 runs 24 hours per day, requiring an oil change every 250 hours or approximately every 11 days. Generator 1 runs about 6 hours per day. Together, our system now produces 120% of the farm's energy demand, leaving a 20% surplus. This includes 70,000 kilowatt hours per month from the biogas generators and another 40,000 kilowatt hours from solar panels, a truly sustainable and self-sufficient energy model that maximizes on-farm resources.